So in this video, we're going to talk about the vector cross product in three-dimensional Euclidean space. So if we take two vectors, a and vector b here, and we want to cross product those two vectors, a cross producted with b, this is how it's written, then the answer to that, in contrast to the dot product, is going to be another vector. Whereas, of course, the dot product was a scalar value, it was a real number. And this vector, a cross b, is going to be defined by three properties. So the first of those properties is that the modulus of this vector, a cross b, is going to be the area of the parallelogram defined by the two vectors, a and b, which I've drawn on this picture here. So here's the vector a, here's the vector b. This is what I mean by the parallelogram formed by the vectors a and b. So if you imagine sticking the vector b here and the vector a here, we form a nice parallelogram there, and that the area of that parallelogram is going to be the modulus of our vector a cross b. The second property that this vector is going to obey is that it's going to be perpendicular to both the vector a and the vector b. Now the two criteria that we've given so far almost completely specify what this vector is going to be, but not quite. So we know the size of the vector, it's going to equal the area of that parallelogram, and we almost know the direction of the vector because it needs to be perpendicular to both the vector a and the vector b. Now that leaves just two possibilities. One of these is the one that's drawn on this picture here, but the other one is the absolute opposite vector. So the same modulus but pointing in exactly the opposite direction is also a possibility. It meets both of those first two criteria. So we're now going to add a third criteria that tells us which one it needs to be. So the third property is that it needs to obey what's called the right hand rule, which means that if you take your right hand and curl your fingers from A to B, then the direction that your thumb points in is the direction that the vector needs to uh, be pointing in. So in this case, A cross B is going to be going up like this rather than down like that. In contrast, if we took B cross A, then if you follow the right hand rule for that, you want your fingers to curl from B to A, so you have to invert your right hand, and in that case your thumb will be pointing down, so the answer will be that other vector of size equal to the area of this parallelogram, perpendicular to both A and B, but pointing in exactly the opposite direction. So in this case, the cross product is not commutative, unlike the dot product. So A cross B is actually equal to minus B cross A. Now, if we write our vectors in terms of the IJK basis, then there exists a formula for the cross product in terms of the components. So we, here we have our vector a, and we're going to call the components a1, a2, a3. So the vector a is a1i plus a2j plus a3k. Similarly, with the vector b, we're going to call the components b1, b2, and b3. So it's b1i plus b2j plus b3k. And now the formula for a cross b, this new vector, this cross product, is going to be this mess here. So a2b3 minus b2a3, that is going to be the i component. So that times i plus b1a3 minus a1b3j plus a1b2 minus b1a2k. Now there is a handy trick for remembering this formula, which is if you create the 3 by 3 matrix by putting i, j, k in the top row, if you then put your first vector a that you're going to cross product in the second row, its components, and then you put your second vector in the cross product b in the lowest row, again its components b1, b2, b3, then if you take the determinant of that matrix it will give you this formula out here. Now for this video I'm not going to go into detailed explanations of determinants, it's a fantastic fascinating topic that warrants its own video. So I'm going to assume that you know how to take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. There's nothing fancy going on here. This is just a trick for remembering this formula. So do not read too much into the fact that the formula can be gained in this manner. 
So to take the determinant, then we first go to i, we cover up its row, its column, and then we take the remaining portion of the matrix, this 2 by 2 matrix here, and we want the determinant of that times i. We then go along to j, we cover up its row, its column, take the remaining part of the matrix, which is this 2 by 2 matrix, a1, a3, b1, b3. We want the determinant of that multiplied by j. However, remember that that middle bit needs to have a negative sign there, so it's minus the determinant of this times j. Finally, we go to k, we cover up its row, its column, we take the determinant of the remaining 2 by 2 matrix, which is here, and we multiply that by k, and this time we want to add that on. When we take the determinants of these 2 by 2 matrix, the way you do that is you multiply this one by this one, and you subtract off this one by this, multiply by this one. And that gives you this formula here. So if we look at the i term up here, so a2, b3 minus b2, a3 is exactly what you get if you take the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix. This one's a little bit more complicated because of the negative sign. So instead of it being a1, b3 minus b1, a3, instead it's b1, a3 minus a1, b3 because the negative sign has changed that. Finally, over here, a1, b2 minus b1, a2 is the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix. So this formula can be remembered in this manner, but I urge you not to read too much into this. This is just a trick for remembering this formula. The aim of this video is now to see why this formula gives a vector that is perpendicular to both A and B, has size equal to the area of the parallelogram defined by A and B, and also obeys the right hand rule. And of those three things, the actual most difficult one is going to be the final one to prove that it obeys the right hand rule. That's going to require the most advanced linear algebra. Indeed, a heads up for later on, we're going to need to use the fact that the matrix of a linear transformation that preserves orientation of the basis vectors has a positive determinant, and we're not going to prove that in this video, we're just going to use it.